but you saw that I have actually two of these things. I have height and width. So let's just first try with try start with the width is to zero. See what happens. So I, if I open up my camera, my camera is over here. So if I look this way, you see that this is basically my camera, you know, picture plane. And you're gonna see that looking right at the picture plane, th this thing looks flat. And that's because it's basically projected on the camera picture plane. That comes from using the, you know, the um, the camera Z local for um, uh, for a vector. So if I, but the problem is that if I move this guy, like really, you know, uh, to face the camera. So if the effect comes, you know, straight at the camera, this is this projection thing is actually becoming a problem. I can show you the worst case, basically, which is the the thing shot straight straight at the camera, kind of. So if I look. Through the camera, you know, you see that I get these, you know, not a very cool thing. So in most of the cases, that's not going to be an issue. But if it is, um, you know, I'll need to displace them once again. And this is going to be, uh, you know, I have displaced them once on this perpendicular vector, but I'll need to displace them once again on the other perpendicular vector just to get a three-dimensional uh, thing. And that's why I use. Um, Instead of just you know monochromatic noise, I use a red and green noise, and this red and green noise is um, actually wired mostly. Um, so my phase is wired, my size is wired, so that when I change the size, it changes um, at both um, instances in the red and in the green, and I then mix them up with 50/50 amount. Uh, in a mix map, and I sample this mix map, so I have this green channel which is which offsets on in this vector, but then I also have the red channel which offsets in kind of the height vector. So if I if I have this direction, you know, this is 90 degrees, and this is also 90 degrees. This is kind of you know my Cartesian um, you know coordinate system here. So all these three are perpendicular, and actually finding this guy is uh, this direction is really easy because again if I use the cross product I can just take then this thing and this thing that I had before and I have a vector which is perpendicular to both which is what I need for the height. So I get this vector for the height. That's the actually the height is my the original thing and then the width is the other thing. I just call them height and width. Now we can call them whatever you want if that's not a good enough name. And you can see here that I use this vector by scalar vector scalar multiply to uh, get the magnitude at the width. And again you can see the cross product here which is the the vector uh, which is the original thing. Let me see. Um, it's the direction, yeah, yeah, the original uh, direction that I had. Cross product with the new one, with the um, the result of the uh, camera up vector and the original guy, which means you know I do cross vector between this guy and this guy, and it gives me this guy. So I do that for width, and you can see. If I go to my camera again, view. Yeah. So I have this situation. If I increase my width, say like height is 0.7. If I also make my width 0.7, I'm just gonna ramp up my density so I get a thicker line. Oh yeah. Mm, because I could, I didn't actually connect these, so I'm gonna connect it. So you know, height is first added, and then the width is added on top. So now let's see what's gonna happen, and you see that I have the third dimension added. 
So if I look through the camera room, um, you see that I have, let's make the perspective, I have like some kind of shape and not the flat thing simply. And if you look at the whole thing, it's going to be not just a flat projected arc, it's going to have, you know, like a three-dimensional structure. The cool thing is that, of course, I can, you know, dial how much of this I need. So, you know, dial the flatness. Um, so that's pretty much the setup. And, you know, when you think about it a little, it's actually very, you know, it's much easier. Uh, it was much easier to set up than even to explain it. And, uh, you know, next steps could be just to animate uh, the thing. Um, I couldn't actually do it here because I send my, I get my, I send my particles um, into the position, but they, it only gets they only get sent on birth so if i want to animate i will need to actually refactor this setup a little so i get um you know something which is gonna act on the particles um, their whole lifetime uh, and then you can export actually the time here of the text map and wire it with a random uh, so you can sample different you know you can sample different um, noises in a, in a different a different time I, I usually i would animate the noise you know the face of the noise um, in the material editor and then i would use the time here to sample a random uh, time at this animation so i get a different curves and this could be placed on particles and uh, the harder thing would be to make it conform to a sphere uh, or like curved surface, but I have also a couple of these ideas about that. And you see that I have exposed a bunch of things here that I can tweak, like uh, I can tweak the amplitude, which is you know what you're gonna have to do in a you know in a product setting. You need to to be able to tweak a lot of stuff. So I tweak the amplitude. Uh, I also, which is cool, I tweak the offset and check out what happens when you tweak the offset i can actually bend the whole thing like this and i can do a bend for the width also which is you know could be handy to have something like this control the default sub minus 0 0.25 and i think that's pretty much it for this setup um, I hope it was useful and you know see you guys soon